Elizabeth Alfano. It's another episode of Awesome Vegans right here on Jane Unchained. Today I'm doing something a little different. I've got a meat eater in the house. It's a Joel carnivore Murray. conversion. Yeah. Yes, it's a little bit of a conversion, maybe, if we're lucky. Joel Murray in the house, he's been kind enough to say, okay, yeah, I heard about this plant-based thing. Meatless Monday, I'll try it. Well, I'm excited about this. I, uh, I was kind of joking when I said, yeah, well, my favorite meat dish is could you make me a meatless meatloaf? But you actually have gone out and done that. Yes, I have. And then uh, pasta bolognese, which is kind of the, the staple for Italian food. Uh, it's your basic, you know, every lunch, every dinner, it's there. So I thought, Lots well, of meat. if you could do that well without meat, I'll, maybe I'll get on board. Okay, so I'm gonna make him two things. Now, last week you guys saw me make the meatloaf and I was really making it for Joel. He's the one who requested it, so we've got that recipe down. Today it's pasta bolognese and uh, we've already started drinking. Tell us what you're drinking, Joel. Well, I'm having a little fernet uh, This is a kind of a digestif, just yes. to make sure your, your palate is ready for meatless wonder. Uh, sophisticated Joel. Okay, I'm drinking water. I was gonna dive into the wine. I, I, I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, but okay, one more detail before we get to cooking. So Joel and I have a little history. The last time I saw you, two years ago, mm -hmm. Joel and I are both from Chicago. Shout out to Chicago. And we both love Wrigley Field, of course. I grew up at Addison and Lakeshore. Yeah. You know, if you, so from the top of my building, you could see Wrigley Field and you could hear, take me out to the ball game. Incredible. Classic, my whole life, would go there with my grandmother. I mean, every Chicagoan has a story about how Wrigley Field has impacted their childhood. But I would go to Wrigley Field with my grandmother. She taught me how to keep score oh, yeah. on the old fashioned scorecards with a little pencil. Yeah, sure. Yes, okay, so. Not, and you not just, so little, it was, you know, it was a, it 10 little. cents, but it was, you know, the price was little. <laughs> and you would divide the box. You know what I'm talking, okay, so. Everybody had their own way. Okay, well that was my grandmother's was way. Yeah. Uh, but two years ago, I was talking to Joel and I said, I can't do it anymore. I've lost faith. I can't believe I'm saying this as a Chicagoan. I've lost faith. I don't think they're gonna do it. And Joel was like, no, this isn't the year to back out. This is the year. It was three years ago. It's been that long. Oh, right, because now it's 2019. Yeah. So. Feeling guilty ever since then, 2016, I thought it would be in honor of the Cubs and our last conversation that I would wear World Champions 2016. I'm still living this dream right now. It took forever. Thank God it was the seventh <laughs> game. It was Thank the God. most exciting game of all time. Yes, like, yes. Yeah. And you were there. I think you threw I went out to a games. Pitch, or... No, I throw, out, I throw out the pitch every year and sing the stretch, but uh, for the World Series, I, well, Billy and I sang for a playoff game. We sang Take Me Off the Ball Game. But, yeah. um, the World Series games, I went to three, four, and five. I didn't get to Cleveland for the, for oh, the magical crowning. Oh, the pain. Uh, yeah, especially three and four were very painful. So, okay, I must say, I'm so very jealous of you because singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game is like my life's dream at Wrigley. I don't want to sing it anywhere else. At Wrigley. Why would you sing it anywhere else? Why would you sing it anywhere else? It's Isn't pretty amazing when you, you get up there to sing in front of 41,000 of your friends. Uh, it, it's a little intimidating. and. Uh, I've got family members that have done it and will point out to you which word you got wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. The mistakes you're making? Yeah, there's okay. a certain little fine tuning that some people know. Do you lean out? Like, oh, one. <laughs> yeah, you get out there, you do a little bit of Harry. Yes, and got one, it. One, two, three, but uh, it's quite a drop, so it, uh, it freaks you out a little bit. Yeah, don't drink too much and then go rolling over. That would I've always well. drank too much. Uh, <laughs> the first time I did it, there was a three and a half hour rain delay. So I, after three and a half hours of Murphy's Bleacher, I had to come throw out the first pitch, and then like two and a half hours later, I had to sing the stretch. So uh, I was uh, well into my cups at that point, as they say. Well, okay, I, I will look that up online. That's gotta be a good one mm -hmm. online. Okay, all this chatting. Um, I have to get to cooking, because I also would like to have a drink, and I don't want one on an empty stomach. So let's just move on, shall we? Let's you do a little have a cooking. Good base. Yes, I wanna yeah. have a good base. Okay, so, um, I've got a huge kitchen here, I love my kitchen, but it's just easier to cook together here right now, so we're not gonna go over to the stove. Pasta bolognese, what, what do you do when you're cooking Italian food? I know you know the answer to this, it's olive oil. It's always extra virgin, and I'm Sicilian, so I've got lots of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover the, I don't know if you can see this, I'm just gonna cover the base of this. Now I know everybody else um, measures, I really don't. It's, it's for amateurs. <laughs> That's right, yes. Yeah. I don't want to waste my time measuring. Oh, no, that's not so hard. And, no, no, I haven't even I turned it on yet. Whoops, sorry. Let me, let me get just it. Just coating the bottom. Thank 
you. Okay, so now it's on my stove. Okay, so we're heating up our extra virgin olive oil. This is urban camping. This is glamping at its finest. We're, we're camping in, in a kitchen, no less. Yes, we're glamping in my glamping Venice in apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so here I am. I don't know if you can see me. I'll get the wine bottle out of the way. Um, You're cutting I, onions. I'm cutting onions. With a straight face. I'm, yes, I am. I'm cutting onions with a straight face. Now, I don't have too many onions here, and the reason I don't have too many onions is because I knew that I would have to cook for a while. Jill, would you hey, put the onions in the I'm flush with onions. <laughs> I've got tons of onions. All of them? Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. Absolutely. Oh, it's easy to measure. So, uh, the, the recipe is going to be online later, mm -hmm. but I just want everyone to know. Okay, so got my pot, got onions, and then, of course... Steaming. I've got garlic as well. So I'm gonna dice up some more garlic, but I already put in some garlic in there. So this is a base every Italian person should know. Okay, we're moving on. There was on. a little something green in there too. What was that? Yes, it touched it? parsley. Oh, it touched parsley. Some parsley, which is coming in. Not coriander. No, not coriander, not today. That's a different recipe. I know, I'm, I'm part of the world that is allergic to coriander. Ah, so what else are you allergic to? Just coriander. Okay, okay. Uh, what a weird thing to be allergic well, to. Well, everybody, everything, Mexican has cilantro in it now. It's like, yeah, 5% yeah. of the world hates it. Yes, it tastes I, like soapy water to us. Isn't that so funny? I didn't put it on That's my it. meatloaf because yeah. I thought he might not like that. Mm. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Okay, now I'm dicing uh, just a small stalk of celery because it's always good for your base. You just want to have some celery in there. It's a perfect magical food that you actually lose weight eating it. Oh, I didn't know you, you ate less celery. Well, you supposedly exert more calories eating celery Shopping. than you in, in, you know, in your diet. Um, would you be the stirrer of the two of us, please? All right. Yes, I can do. Okay, now when you're glamping, you don't really have the same kind of control. Oh, shoot. I just lost my glamp. Okay, hold on. Your stir is good. You don't need control. Okay, that's right. That's right. Joel knows what he's doing. Okay, so that's just going to simmer down. Okay, I tell you guys this all the time. Uh, we're gonna share, if that's okay, the space. Salt as you go, you never wanna salt at the end because then it's just too much salt. You tend to over salt if you cook at the end. So I always like to salt as I go, thanks, sir. Um, okay. Pepper as you may. Salt as you go, pepper as you may. I don't know. These are new shirts we're gonna be selling after this. He's a poet. You can see that uh, right away. Okay, so we did our garlic and we did our onions. We're moving that over here. Mm -hmm. Now, what should I do next? Okay. Put in the meat. I, well, yes, thank you for that. I'm going to keep that simmering. I'm gonna chop up some parsley, Italian parsley I've got right here. Uh, this is also just going to add some flavor and dimension. And remember, I've kind of got some pressure on me because I have to make this really good for Joel because I don't want to hear at the end of this like, oh, it's not as good as my meat dish. Oh. So, okay, pressure's on, pressure's on. The best possible one yes you ever had, we were in Florence when I was going to school. I went to school in Rome, Italy, with Loyola University one year. I'm up against the Romans! And so oh you're gosh. up against the you know, authentic Italian taste tester. But uh, Dave Pasquese and I wandered into a place, and it was one of these family-style restaurants. Wait, and you've known Dave Pasquese since? We were roommates in college. 82, 83, we lived together. I love him. I haven't He's seen him in a while. One of the better I love him. improvisers in the world. Yes, he but, absolutely uh, we, is. We wandered into this place and it was family style and you walked in and they said, do you want fish or do you want meat? And plant-based was not an option. And we went with meat and uh, the lady brought us over a bowl of uh, pasta and it was the best rigatoni I've ever had in my life. And when we, we finished this huge bowl of pasta, like the size of this you know, pot, and she came over and she goes, Ancora? Ancora means again. More, yes. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we can do that. Thirty years later, my wife and I are in Florence, and I'm going. It's around. It's it's down this alley. Now, I don't know where the heck it is, but we found it, and we went in, and we both got the same pasta. And the lady came over and said Ancora, and I'm like, yep. And even my wife went for the second bowl. Oh so, my God! Oh, you see the pressure? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going. I've for seen these. some good. Well, I don't know. I don't know, but hopefully you're going to be uh, kind to me. I know. Okay, now. And I'm a good eater. You're a good eater? Okay. And a good drinker. This is why we Wait love Joel Murray. That looks like meat. It is not meat. Right, okay. It's incredible. This is Beyond, Beyond meat. meat. Have you ever right. heard of it? Beyond Meat, people. Mm -hmm. Beyond Meat. Okay. So I'm throwing in plant based. It's all pea protein, actually. So I'm throwing this in. Mm, that's one. I'm chopping that up a little bit. Yeah, please, please, one, please. One stir. Yes. Mm, that's two. Thank you, everybody. That's a double double. We call that in the plant-based world. That's exactly what we call that. 
Uh, so I'm letting you work on that. Working. Now I'm going to, just like I like to salt as I go, oregano. Oh, look at all this oregano. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. This is where it comes in, all the nice spices and stuff. I think um, I used that as a substitute in a student film years ago. <laughs> but anyway. It, it could have been another substance, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Right. We're not 100% sure. So this is how easy this, mess this uh, meal is. You just like throw a bunch of stuff in. And of course the next thing we're going to throw in would be tomatoes. But I didn't chop lots of tomatoes. I'm taking a can. I'm cheating. I'm taking a can. So the woman who cooked for Joel in uh, Rome, she does not approve. I'm very sorry. We don't know. I mean, we don't know it. Maybe you know, she just does just came out in a bowl. Who knows? It might have been prefabricated pea-based um, <laughs> meat as well. It just could have been that. Okay, so salt, pepper, oregano, basil, garlic powder. I use it all the time. Move over, mister. We're putting some garlic oh, powder garlic. in there. Yeah. You've got actual garlic in there, too. And I have actual garlic in there. Of all course, right. of course. Uh, we'll so judge us on our breath after this. Well, uh, luckily you guys won't have to endure that. Okay, now. It's a good color. Think, yes, things are, things are, is there anything you think we need more of? Um, no. No, I okay. I can't think of a thing. Okay, we're gonna let that sit there for a while. Now sometimes what I do is, you know, right about now, I taste it and I figure out if I need more tanginess with tomato paste. And I'm also going to add the piece de resistance fennel, fennel seed. seed. Oh. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no, wait, sorry, whoops. Before I get to fennel seed, red I wine. Say, <laughs> I was gonna say, my wife drinks while she makes dinner and it, it's because she has to put a little bit of wine in it and uh, I don't know where the rest of the bottle goes, but some of it gets in the, in the pasta. How many years have you been married? 29, 29, so next year I get a pension. Yes. So that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, no, same gal, same hometown. We're both from Wilmette, Illinois. You're both from Wilmette? How'd you meet? Uh, we Don't met at college. No, after college, uh, we met at a picnic, and then she was taking acting classes on Well Street when I was at the Second City, oh, and uh, oh I stalked her for six, eight months, and she finally agreed to go out. Oh, but, uh, that's a she, great story. And she uh, was a waitress in my hometown, and I uh, used to go up and visit my mother on Sundays, and then I just happened to be at the bar she worked at. And then I realized after the fact, every time she sees me, I'm by myself in a bar. She must think I'm a lush. And, uh, <laughs> She'd be right. Yeah, she found out, yeah, <laughs> it turns out. Yes, but that's true. Oh gosh, wow, 29 years, congratulations. What's the trick? What's the that's, trick? Yeah, because that's not easy. I had a senile guy across the street from my old house and he used to, every single time I talked to him, he'd come over and he'd tell a story or whatever, but it always ended with, you know, I always get the last word in my house. Yes, dear. And then he would oh. laugh and walk away and he'd tell me the exact same line every single time I ever saw him. But, uh, Is I that think the just, answer? Uh, well, you know, the Grateful Dead say, you know, that's right, the women are smarter. If you just oh, remember yes. that they're smarter than you and yes, they go are. with the flow. And, yeah. uh, I see. Happy wife, happy life kind of oh, thing. Oh, yes. But, uh, yes. I don't know, that and I'm on the road a lot, and that, that, that helps the relationship. <laughs> yeah. Giving your wife a break? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the secret to 29 years of marriage. Get the heck out of Dodge and don't stick around too long, and then when you come back, they'll miss you. Yeah, In exactly. theory. Hard In theory. Uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder, as they say. Yes. And Somebody does. Yes. Um, and Probably then a traveling salesman. You have four kids, which I also think is amazing. Yeah, especially when you're on the road. How you had all those children? It's I don't understand. It happened. And yeah, it was I got you. Four great kids. <laughs> yeah, they look like her, unfortunately. So he was selling before we started. He still has one kid in high school. And how many years have you had kids in high school? Uh, teenagers. Well, for 16 years so far. Oh. So I, I got okay. Two Last more, year. Two you're... more years of teenagers and then we'll be done with that. Okay, so the end is near for you, which is very oh, good. Yeah. Okay, and how's our stuff looking here? It looks pretty good. It looks okay. pretty good. So, I think that meat could uh, brown a little bit, but yes. through the magic of changing pots, I think we might have. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. So usually this needs to hang out here for about 30 minutes right. and settle down, but we're not going to do that. So uh, we're moving over to this pot. Don't watch this pot. Don't, don't watch her move the pot. It's the same pot. It's just time is passing while I'm speaking. It's amazing. Uh, it 
It's fabulous. Oh my god, this smells mm, smell so Smell that. Good. Oh, now it's smelling almost done. Oh, just keep wow. stirring. Keep stirring. I'm, I'm sorry, look people. At that. that looks yeah. good. See, that, that browned up quite oh, nicely. Gosh, just that looks like so that. good. Okay, now tell me wow. again. Do you want me to serve it with pasta and then we pour this over? Or do you want me to mix the pasta right now? Up to you. I, uh, I like to mix it myself. But in the bowl or in, on your plate? In, in the bowl. In the bowl. Uh, but okay. that's that's me. No, that will do it. But I've, I've done both, and I've seen both done in Italy, and I've seen it. Okay, Joe. I'm gonna have you decide how much of this you want in here. Okay, I'll pour it in, and you tell me when to stop. Okay. Oh boy, let's hope it didn't stick together. Why not? There we go. There we go. There we go. You tell me when to stop. Keep going. Keep going. Uh. See, see yeah, how that that's works about out. that. Looking good. While well, you do that, I'm going to chop some fresh basil because we want that on top. Nobody wants old basil. Nobody wants old basil, Joel. Yes, it's basil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, my word. Okay, so the last time Joel and I were together, we were also with Curtis Armstrong. My man Booger. Oh, that was so fun. Such a good guy. Such a good guy. Yeah, and I think since we saw him, he's got some awards and couldn't happen to a nicer person, so I'm super happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great guy. And I met him on one crazy summer along with my friend Bob Cat who we're still friends. Yes. And, uh, we still collaborate on things. So uh, you probably all know the film God Bless America. Bobcat was the director on that, and of course Joel started that movie, which was great. And, and of course you were in Mad Men. We're going to talk all about his career in just a second. But uh, do you miss John Hamm? I miss John Hamm. Yeah, we used to golf a little John bit Hamm. more than we do lately. Um, he hasn't been in town much. He's been living in New York a lot. But yeah. uh, he, uh, he actually said in Esquire article one time, one of his favorite things to do in the world is to golf over at Rancho Park with Joel Murray. Oh, he mentioned me. Look at that. Sweet guy. People say he's a sweet guy. The nicest guy in the world. Yeah, and a photographic awesome. memory. And really? kind of good looking. Kind of. But, uh, but you know, no, just, yeah, we went enough. to a golf tournament in St. Louis where he's from. And we went and I thought I was going to get the inky underside tour of St. Louis. And we ended up helping a woman move a refrigerator and he stayed and painted her kitchen. <gasps> and that was not a euphemism. That was a it was like a great aunt or somebody. Oh my word. But yeah, I I don't really have on painting clothes, John. I'll, I'll be back at the bar. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, just There's a sweet, theme with sweet you. man, yeah. Okay, I am going to plate this. Now you tell me, I can add a little more pasta, or do you like it this meaty? Well, if it's not meat, so. Okay. Uh, no, that was. Okay, so folks, I'm going to start. Oh, obviously, I didn't boil the pasta. I think you guys know pasta, water, salt, boil it. But here's a really important tip for everybody. Whatever it says on the back, so this thing says uh, 13 to 15 minutes, do not do that because you will overcook the pasta. So I cooked this for 10 minutes because then I knew that we'd be heating it here together and that in total is gonna to be about 13. So never follow the directions on the box. Usually cut it to like 50 or 70% and then you got what you Remember, need. Remember, okay. don't measure, don't read directions. <laughs> right. If you learned so, anything yeah. here today. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to plate this uh, over my glamping stove. Oh, it's meaty, people. Oh, I've meaty. already made a mess. Gosh darn it. Mm. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh. If you need more pasta, I can bet. Oh, look at me making a mess everywhere. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be all right. This was supposed to be like the beauty shot, but whoops. The girl who didn't believe the Cubs could do it in 2016 is kind of making a mess. Shit, more, sir? More? No. Yeah. Well, then let's try it. Oh, let's first. try it first. Okay. So we're going to do a. If, <laughs> Sorry for the mess, people. Ah, but wait, oh. but wait, don't go anywhere. Oh. Okay, some fresh basil. Well, are you ready for a glass of wine yet? Oh yeah, I am, in fact. You've done all your heavy lifting. I now. have. Can I hand this to you, sir? I could take that. And if you want to get us going on wine. I'll try. Ready? The course is a little short. <laughs> you got it, you got it. This is good TV. There you go. <laughs> yeah, this is exciting TV. Watch your okay, meat. sorry that took so long. I was getting. Hey, oh, everybody! The meatloaf. I was getting the meatloaf. Okay, go. oh, thanks. I'm all ready to dig in. Bon appetito. So, this meatloaf fell a teeny bit apart, but, um, and hopefully it's not overcooked. But I'm gonna put that there for you as well. And then, if you would like some plant based cheese, Plant-based cheese? Yes. How do you do that? Cashews. Cashews? Yes. 
fermented cashews. So this is plant-based Parmesan. Wow. I know it. So just tell me, am I like frying your mind right now? Well, am I yeah. Like rocking your world. Some of that was a fernet branca. Uh, <laughs> plant-based cheese. Well, I'll, yeah, I'm so gonna go fingers on. on that. Go ahead but, and uh, partake. I'll try a little bit just to cover up the greeny and just some of that. There. I don't know why. <laughs> There you go, you live there. Hopefully this is uh, warm enough for you. You know, I'm trying to get all the temperatures right at the exact right time. Cheers, Cheers. to you. Bon Thank you for being such a good sport and going plant-based. Come on, Lucky 7, I tried really hard. I hope it tastes as good oh, as what you can remember. Right. Well, we will be the test. We will be the... <clears throat> Ooh, yummy. Mm-hmm. Tell the that's truth. That's very good. No, that's great. Okay, now when you eat this, do you think like, oh gosh, that's not meat? No, I haven't thought that yet. <laughs> okay. When I eat this, I think, oh, I didn't have lunch. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Mm. Hopefully the pasta isn't overdone. Mm. You, you know. El dente, just right. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm mm. super happy about that. Now I have both the Prima Piatte and the Segunda Piatte together. Uh, mm -hmm. First course, second course, but I'm gonna try this too over here, what the heck. So I travel around, I do a live Whose Line Is It Anyway show with Ryan Stiles and Greg Proops and Jeff Davis. I've tried to see you. And, oh yeah? Mm-hmm, it's hard to get tickets. Well, uh huh Good for me, huh? Mm-hmm, good for you, yeah. We love good. Yeah, vegan meatloaf. Yeah, right here. Mm-hmm. I fed 17 people with that yesterday mm -hmm. at the Super Bowl. Well, that tastes a little bit more planty. This this is an authentic fake here. <laughs> that yes. one I can tell is not ground beef meatloaf. Mm. or uh, whatever. But anyway, I was saying we tour around with the Who's Line guys and uh, Jeff Davis is vegan and uh, Ryan is limited uh, menu, he, he's a good eater. And Bob Drakesh, the piano player, is vegan. And then our tour manager is vegan. So a lot of times when we go out or when we have a meal ordered for before the show, the tour manager purposely orders a place that has vegan options. So it's I always guess. on the menu and I can say, well, I'll try that, you know, I, I could try that. or. You know, I'm going to have a pork chop, but uh, no. I, if it was no. all this good, I would go with it. So, um, what has your experience been so far with plant-based food? I mean, what, what have been the good recipes like this one, and what about the not so good? Um, I, uh, I, boy, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, a lot of uh, Mediterranean food is, mm -hmm. is plant-based. Naturally plant-based. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of hummus and tabbouleh and, and things like that that uh, are just good. Um, what's bad? I don't know. I can't mm -hmm. think of anything offhand that was bad that was plant-based. I think this is why so many people are coming around mm -hmm. to eating plant-based because it's so much better for you and obviously the planet, obviously the animals, of course, as well. Right. My and son, then my son is a he won't eat anything with eyes oh i love so your I don't son know, i don't know what that you know that would be not, vegan that's vegan right wow so you actually have a lot of vegans in your life i do they're, they're popping up all over <laughs> i guess a, you get to a certain age the ones that are still alive might like, wait wait a minute they're all vegan the ones that are still alive yeah that's right it's only the vegans maybe, left on the planet maybe, maybe that's uh, something to think about Okay, so you do Whose Line Is It Anyway? So I, of course, remember him, Joel, from Mad Men, but you're still un in Shameless? Oh, no. I uh, I had one of the more spectacular uh, suicides ever. In oh, that my show. gosh. Uh, I haven't uh, watched Shameless in like three or four seasons. Apparently. Uh, yeah, I seven or eight seasons. <laughs> seven or eight seasons. They just got picked up for their 10th oh, season my word. without Emmy Rossum. So, oh. Uh, yeah, that's. Wow. No, I uh, I died at the end of season one. I uh, jumped what? in an ice fishing hole, and uh, I don't remember this. Yeah, it was tragic. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, well, then I guess I've had too much to drink myself. Okay, so no more shameless. Right, that's been long gone. But yeah, the the who's line thing takes up so much time. We do a hundred gigs a year now. Oh, and, and so you're uh, on the road. That's a I'm lot. On the road so much, so it's yeah. it's really a dare for my agent to get me work. And uh, in between the it, gigs, they they know where the holes are and. It's fortunate that now they actually work to try to get you work because they can only make money off you during those times. So when you're working, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. But uh, I've done just mainly like independent films and stuff lately. Uh, mm -hmm. I just did a, a Grey's Anatomy. Uh, I was an ice agent. Very topical. I'm always very <laughs> topical. Well, you've also directed a lot of TV. Mm-hmm. 
And which do you prefer, being in front of the camera or behind the camera? Um, I prefer DGA residuals and insurance <laughs> compared to Screen Actors Guild uh, <laughs> residuals and insurance. Uh, it's substantially better, but um, I always say I like the fact that my career is different things. I mean, I do voiceover, I do mm -hmm. you know stage work, I do improv, I do acting. I'm a director, but I, I like to think that if you know you throw four lines over the side of the boat, you're going to catch a fish on come. something. Yeah. And, uh, Fortunately, it's worked out that way. Because uh, you did voiceover work in Monsters University, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I always like voiceover work. I mean, I don't do too much of it because I'm not really trained in it or anything, but every once in a while I'll get to do a commercial and I really like it. Well, you know, to get to work for Pixar is insane because they're, they're, yeah. they pay very well and they're very kind to you and you get to go up to San Francisco and stay in great hotels. And, mm -hmm. um, that one, you know, the residuals are amazing because every little kid in America has a Pixar movie, you know? Yes. And, uh, well, Don Carlson was very good to me. Uh, so that, that, that that's a real blessing to, to get in on that family. Oh, but, uh, wonderful. Hopefully, yes, will some you do of those any people, more? you know, the John yeah. Ratzenbergers of the world and Bonnie Hunts of the world, they get to be in all of them, it seems like. So uh, hopefully uh, they'll have me back for another part down the way. Bonnie is also a Chicagoan, mm -hmm. which is pretty awesome. Um, and what about... We were in the touring company together back in the day. At Second City, mm -hmm. yeah. So going way back, of course, Second City, Chicago. And what about the restaurant? So Marie Brothers Caddyshack is now two years old, year and a half? Well, we've got one in uh, St. Augustine, Florida that is uh, mm. coming on 20 years old. Mm -hmm. But um, we have one in Rosemont right by the airport that uh, is just a year, I guess, about now. And uh, it's, it's wonderful. And I, I get a kick out of it because I can literally I'll, I'll drop off my luggage, check in for the thing, and get the free shuttle over the Caddyshack at the, the Crown Point, Crown Plaza Hotel, and you know, eat and drink for a while, and then take the shuttle back, and uh, the bags are already out. there, and here you're <laughs> up. And, uh, so he's talking about landing at O'Hare, and Rosemont is right outside of Chicago, right next to the airport. So mm -hmm. landing at O'Hare, taking the shuttle to his own restaurant, Murray Brothers Caddyshack. It Caddy is the first exit from the airport. <laughs> so. Strategic Sometimes location. when you fly in, you can actually see the sign. Oh, uh, that's So that's kind of cool. Well, what about a plant-based option? I haven't seen your menu. Do you have any plant-based options at, at uh, Murray Brothers Caddyshack? They do have a really good kale salad. They, uh, they do have some, some smart-thinking food, as you might say. But uh, yeah, I mean, it started out as comfort food. My brother sure. Andy has been cooking since he was, you know, he faked his IDs when he was 10. Um, but He's a very good cook, so a lot of it is comfort food, and it has, you know, my mother's meatloaf and spaghetti and things like that. Um, but, and they have steaks and ribs and things like that. But no, they do do a lot of salads now because there's a lot of conventions sure. and stuff <laughs> like that, and you gotta make everybody happy. And, uh, but yeah, there, there's a really good kale salad that I had the last time, and uh, we do some interesting things with Brussels sprouts and mm. uh, some other things, but yeah. Okay, well maybe a Beyond Meat Burger is getting onto the menu. Or Elizabeth's meatloaf, but I don't want to compete with your mother. I don't want to upset no. your mother. Elizabeth. When well, you spell it with a Y, huh? A Y S. Mm -hmm. Yes. But um, I'm sure your mother made an awesome meatloaf. But mm -hmm. mine's—I gotta say, mine's pretty good. This is pretty good. The reason it doesn't taste like meat exactly, but it mimics meatloaf, is because I did not use Beyond Meat in this. What I did is I took um, tempeh, which is just fermented soybeans, and I seasoned it with meat seasonings. Mm -hmm. So it's lentils and tempeh and onions and quinoa and mushrooms. And then I packed it all together. I put it in a, a baking sheet with mm -hmm. really spicy tomato on top, like a tomato paste with cumin and soy sauce. And, and then I baked it. So and I- pair as well with the coppola. And the pair as well with the coppola, yeah. So it, it doesn't taste exactly like meat, but it tastes like meatloaf, mm -hmm. which is just incredible. Well, this is really good. I must say that the rigatoni is, uh, is spot on. Oh, you're really kind. Okay, so it is kind of tricky to cook on camera and have everything on cue and stuff. So it probably could be a tad bit hotter. But otherwise, I would say like mm. it's it's okay. It's very good. That's fine by me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So what do you think about the Cubs this year? I was going to ask you that. Well, the truth is. I don't know the stats, and I don't know the players. I just know that I like to be at Wrigley, and I like to eat peanuts, and I like to like look at the sky, be in an outdoor stadium. I hate it when I go to 
a ball club and I'm like, I can't believe they've got mm -hmm. us inside. Yeah, that just doesn't work for me. And I know a lot of people like Comiskey Park, Cellular Fields, now I'm talking about Chicago ones here, but um, there's nothing like Wrigley. I just don't like it. It's the it's happiest place on earth. It is the happiest yeah. place on earth. So I don't know, you tell me, what are we gonna be this year as a team? Well, it all depends on our relief pitching or pitching, of course, because okay. uh, we've got the, the bats. Um, I don't know, it's, really? it's, it's just fun. Uh, you know, we went through so many years where they were pathetic, but mm -hmm. you know, they, they're fun to watch and uh, they're, they're gonna have their own, they're gonna have their own network now. I mean, growing up on WGN, you know, every day after school and watching the Cub games, it's gonna no longer be on GN at all. They're gonna have their own network. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel I about that either, no. but uh, I'll but be subscribing. I uh, you're, of course, you're right. subscribing. I grew up in the time of Bozo. Did you go to WGPS? Mm -hmm. So I would go to the studio for Bozo. Well, I never got to go. Oh, wow, it's so awesome. Yeah, I, I remember winning a bunch of like taffy. Mm -hmm. And I still, it was like such a vivid memory for me. Still, and then I was telling Joel, last week I went to WGN TV to do a, a vegan cooking demo. On the morning and, show? And, no, it was the midday news. On the midday. And it was so fun because I hadn't really been there since Bozo. Mm -hmm. It was really, it's super fun. But did you see the stuff there? Yeah, because they have a, like a history show now yeah, about they, Bozo. They've and got the old the Bozo things in the sets, and uh, the grand prize game is there and stuff. And yeah, it's a it's a walk down memory lane. It's a walk down memory lane. Well, okay, so the midday it, show. I didn't know that. Yeah, they always make me news. get up early when I'm there. Oh, well, okay then. <laughs> Next time. Yeah. Midday show. Yeah. In fact, I hope to be back. I actually have a movie coming out. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. I know. Is it a plant based movie? wish it were a plant-based movie. I'm going to direct a plant-based. That's the next move for me. No, it's called Grey's the New Blonde. Uh-huh. I'm the associate producer and I'm featured in the film and it's going to air, hold on now, end of March. We're look, Come on, Lucky 7. We're looking at a premiere in Los Angeles the end of March and then it will make its way across the country. So I'm hoping to be back on WGN mm -hmm. for the Chicago premiere to announce, you know, the film when we premiere there. So. Um, I mean, I'm no Joel Murray, so whatever. It's the, that's what I got on my plate. But well, that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It'll be my first film, so I have to say that is pretty cool. But well, who, enough about me. Uh, so all of you people out there, if you're from Chicago, you love Joel Murray. We already know this. WGN or Radio. Half. You're. <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a current thing. It's mm. a it's in the present. Uh, but for everybody who's getting to know you right now as the meat guy who's willing to go plant based and try it. How would they find you and what should they be looking for from you? Oh, well, I'm the ninth child, so I'm Joel Murray, nine of nine on both Instagram and uh, Twitter. Okay. Um, I'm whosliveanyway.com. You can find out where we're doing the shows. We might be coming to your neighborhood. Uh, what do you got coming up like soon for cities? I'm going this weekend. I'm, I'm every weekend until Easter. Uh, I'm going this weekend. We're going to the Vils. We're going to Asheville, Charlottesville, and Knoxville. Um, but we tour around and Ryan Stiles only does a certain amount of gigs now, oh. and there's three of us that are the core with Rob, the or Bob, the piano player. So Drew Carey and Chip Eston from the show Nashville and um, uh, Dave Foley from the Kids in the Hall are filling in the fourth spot. So it's it's really fun for us because we get a different gesture, you know, every weekend kind of thing, and uh, we don't know what to expect, and it's all made up, and yeah. uh, there's no preparation. It's, uh, it's beautiful. This is the best job ever. It's, yeah. There's zero prep. You arrive on stage, you do your thing. None of that you... memorizing like madmen. You just show up, you have a, a stiff drink of scotch, and then you go out in front of 1,500 <laughs> people and make up a show, and it's, uh, uh, that's it's pretty great. That's improv for you. How awesome. Well, who would have thought? You know, I started out doing improv with Del Close in the Improv Olympic in Chicago in 1984 or something like that, 85, but who would have thought all of a sudden you'd be making bank doing improv in your 50s. And, uh, that and that's, improv that's, would bring in the money. Yeah, and yeah. actually going first class as compared to when we were in the Second City Touring Company with, you know. Wait, they, they put you in first class? Yeah, the Who's Line guys do. Ooh, yeah, I know. You guys are successful. Some days, but more than others. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's hysterical that I've fallen into this. I filled in for a weekend five years ago and they still haven't kicked me out. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so everybody's going to Who's Line? Who's Live Anyway? Who's Live Anyway.com mm -hmm. to see Joel in one of his traveling shows. Are you going to be in any more um, episodes? Sometimes you pop into different shows at different times. I'm trying to think of what I've shot. Um, not much. <laughs> I'll be in Holiday Hell, a, uh, a grindhouse kind of holiday movie. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a very disgruntled Santa Claus. Uh, I don't oh, you do that well. There, but okay. um, uh, I did the, yeah, I said the, the Grey's Anatomy. 
No, I don't. I've been just so darn busy doing this that yeah. uh, knock and on wood, something will come up soon. Eating plant based. Eating so plant -based. either you're going to see him live coming to a town near you, or you're going to watch him right here having plant based meatloaf and pasta bolognese, mm -hmm. almost as good as Rome. Mm -hmm. We're going to go with that. Almost as good as who would know that it's not meat. Uh, I have my Beyond Meat pasta bolognese. I want to say, Joel Murray, thanks for coming. Thanks for drinking with me. Thanks for eating pasta with me. Thank you. I'm going to need some more of this. Oh, great. Oh, Ancora. Oh, God. Okay, so I'm bringing more pasta. And uh, thanks for not giving up on me mm -hmm. when you could have said, I can't believe that that Chicagoan wow. is giving up on the Cubs in year 2016. Wow. And you're still dining with me. So I got to thank you it for that. It may be the year again. It may be the year this again. This year? Yeah. No way. I think so. Why do you say that? Because I hate every other team. Okay. <laughs> and thank you okay. for picking that up without a hot pad and pretending it's not really hot. That's that is you are strong. That is the Sicilian in you. Um, it's improv here, right here, oh. actually. So you can you guys... hear her hands searing on the bottom of it. <laughs> I'm in a lot of pain. Everybody, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being with me, Joel. So you're such a good sport. Ciao. Thanks for coming on. And all you guys out there, thanks for watching live here on Jane Unchained, Meatless Monday. Thanks for being vegan. Tanti auguri.